Thanks for Maximum PC here at CES 2015. I'm here at uh, Rockets Suite at uh, CES speaking with Tim. And Tim, can you tell us what we're looking at here? Hey, yeah, sure. Um, you're looking at the Rocket Myth. It will be a mouse that we will release later this year, maybe around Q2, late Q2, early, early Q3, I would say. Um, it's designed as an, as an MMO mouse. We always wanted to do that, but at the same time, we always thought that um, maybe it's not so convenient to be stuck to this you know, typical 12-button 12, 12 setup. So what you already write, see right here is a maybe you know, un, uh, or not, uh, a bit uncommon uh, button setup, and that's because you can configure it uh, completely on your own and completely individual. You have um, a release mechanism down here, so if you press that, all the all the buttons come out, um, and you see these twelve slots. And what you can do right now is you can take all your your buttons that you might want to have and build your completely own button grid depending on the game that you want to play, uh, depending on your personal ergonomic preferences. And if you buy this as an MMO mouse, for example, because now the new uh, World of Warcraft add-on is out, great, you need your 12 buttons, and in maybe in six months you switch back to playing Counter-Strike, let's say, um, then you can get rid of these buttons and you don't need to switch over to another mouse. So you could, for example, put these blank spots in down here. Um, you just gotta find the right ones. This is the one for the middle. Right, and then you have buttons up here. So and, and in this, uh, you build then your FPS mouse out of your existing MMO mouse. Okay, so the idea is very modular for whatever game type exactly. you want to play. Exactly. Um, the, the mouse will come with uh, two or three different sets of buttons, but uh, in addition to that, we are also planning, planning to give away 3D data of this area so that people out there will be able to print out their own buttons. Uh, of course, we understand that right now, you know, to, to be able to print out a small piece like this, you have you need to have a, a printer that's very accurate. But uh, we think that the, the technology will develop very quickly in the next months and, and years also. Um, and you can also use third-party services, you know, to design your own buttons and then uh, send it to a third-party service. They will print it for you and send back the buttons to you. So. You can think about, you know, doing things with your gamer tag, your clan tag, doing different shapes of buttons, different angles, just to, to for your, you know, to, to fit your personal preferences. And you can also adjust the side part here. So you can take this off, it's, uh, fixed with with, with magnets. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, even even you know just the shape of the mouse so that it's it fits better to an FPS uh, FPS playstyle for example and if you have the you know more MMO game playstyle or you just prefer you know a, a bigger shape then then you click on this and it's very although it's it's you know not not fixed to the mouse it's very stable and stiff and, and you won't feel that this is a that this is a part that, that can come off um, as I said we are looking at a release at around Q2 Q3 something like that um, there's no pricing for the mouse yet and um, it will have uh, a 10,000 10, DPI uh, Philips sensor, um, yeah, and and so this is a weight laser. Yeah, okay, exactly. Um, has a two-way lighting system, so the light pipe down here has another, or can have another color than the lighting of the logo. So you can change the color, sort of a. Of course, yeah, yeah, and it 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 will be the first product with our new unified swarm uh, driver software. So you can do all your all your button assignment here. Um, you can change all the light settings, um, everything. Of course, it's. It will feature um, um, Easy Shift, Rocket Talk, and all these things that you that you expect from from one of our products. Gotcha. Cool. And uh, we also have some uh, some keyboards to look at, right? That you guys right. Have. Let's move over to the keyboards and. Okay.
I will show it to you. Um, this is the, the, the expansion, the latest expansion of the Raya series. Um, maybe, maybe some people out there are already familiar with the Raya series. It's our mechanical keyboard series. And um, what you're looking at right now is the 10-key less version, so without a num block. And over here we have the, um, the big one. Uh, RGB, the, the full-size yeah. keyboard, and the new thing about it is uh, it are, um, are the, the RGB LEDs. Uh, we still stick to the Cherry MX switches, so meaning those are also the ones that, that are built in here and that will... Yeah, these are currently using the browns, right? Exactly, so um, probably this will also be the ones that we are shipping it with first. Um, not No decision made yet. Um, Again, you're looking at a uh, release in Q3, I would say. Um, these are still prototypes, so some details will still change. For example, the, um, the macro keys down here will later on also be in RGB. Right now they are only blue, but it's, yeah, because it's a prototype. Um, like you would expect it from, from any other Rocket product, it comes with a rich driver software. You, you, you can do lots of, you know, um, settings with, with the new uh, colorful um, RGB lighting. Uh, one effect you see right here, we call that fireworks. <coughs> this will be something that you can set up in the driver software. Um, and then if you want to do the more advanced stuff like, you know, equalizers and, and things like that, we will offer an SDK um, so you can, you know, dig deeper into the coding and programming of all kinds of fancy lighting effects. Um, yeah, as I said, Q3 release, no pricing yet, so we, re we will release information about the price points of both keyboards um, as soon as we can. Uh, I guess it seems like RGB is sort of the kind of the new uh, mm -hmm. the new thing when it comes to mechanical keyboards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from what I've been hearing uh, with some of the RGB keyboards, um, for what you know, for whatever reason, some of the keys. Uh, are starting to die a little bit earlier or from you know from different manufacturers or uh, you know color is starting to fade over time and things mm -hmm. like that uh, what are you guys doing to sort of combat that and I well, know it's have, difficult you tough. have to work hard on, on the quality uh, management side you know and then the quality checks the thing with the RGB LEDs is you basically have three LEDs per key yeah, so red, red the, green blue right there are much more in there so the chances that one dies it's much much bigger than mm -hmm. than with the single color ones um, that's why you hear a lot of complaints about you know LEDs dying uh, but we are trying to make sure that you know the quality management in the factory is right and that um, that things like that just don't happen but if you know we have a, a warranty policy um, so if you buy one of the keyboards and one of the LED dies, then you can uh, you can send it back and then get a new one. Gotcha. So, so recently I had a chance to also visit uh, to Logitech as well, and they were bringing up some some issues that they had to overcome as well. Um, you know, one of which pertained to uh, the the USB power. Uh, I believe your keyboard. I believe this keyboard requires uh, two USB. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one to I guess power the lighting, and the other one to, mm -hmm. to power the keyboard. Um, they went with a, a single USB solution. Can you talk about why you went with the dual? Um, well, they use different um, they use different key, uh, key yeah, switches. switches right. So um, for the <coughs> for the Cherry MX switches, we need the two USB plugs to have enough power because the the, uh, the RGB LEDs are much more power consuming, of course, than the the single color ones. Um, and that's why we split up the USB and have two USB ports um, for the power. Um, I, I cannot, I cannot speak for for their solution and, and you know how how they made it technically. Um, uh, I, I assume that it has to do with the diff different type of switch they use. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe that's less power consuming. Okay, gotcha. And uh, as you know, like another thing that they were worried about is like lighting consistency uh, on the key. With you know RGB and stuff like that, is that something that you guys are worried about, or uh, you mean you mean the durability of the? Uh, well, like the inconsistency of like lighting. So like usually with cherry switches, um, the light uh, tends to be up more towards the top of the switch. Uh -huh. um, well, I mean that, that that's something that you have to you know solve in the in the design of the keyboard and the man, the manufacturing of it. And I mean you you can look at it, and um, I would say this is a bright, good looking, good looking. Uh, 
lighting. So it, it depends what you make out of it, right? So, um, and, and, and I think we found a pretty good solution. Cool. And uh, I remember, uh, it's not here, but I was talking to you a little bit about it earlier. Um, I was speaking to you about it at E3, I believe it was. You guys were at the Alien mm -hmm. Wars booth. You guys were showing off the, uh, the Rocket Sova. Mm -hmm which I am a huge fan of. Like, I really want one of those things. Uh, for those that don't know, that is uh, Rocket's uh, um, 10 keyless mechanical keyboard um, with, it, that, that's wireless, that also has like a, a mouse pad on it, uh, on the side. Um, and it's, you know, used for like HTPCs or living room PCs and things like that. Um, I saw that back, I think in mm -hmm. June or something yeah, like that. Um, and here we are, it was supposed to go out <laughs> with the uh, Alpha. The Alpha's out now. Uh, that thing is not so. I was just wondering where you know what the status of that thing mm -hmm. is. Well, it, it, the Alpha also was supposed to be uh, a Steam machine, so and now it's a Windows machine. So mm -hmm. you know things change okay. uh, while developing a product like that. Uh, the Sova is under development. Uh, we took a lot of time doing research, doing surveys, finding out you know which kind of feature set people really would like to have with a device like this, and um, we would share some new information very soon. Uh, we didn't bring it here because we wanted to focus other products like the NIT, for example. Um, but we are doing this this device, the Sova, and um, I think uh, you can, you will be pretty amazed when you when you see the, the first information about what the final product will look like. Yeah, I know. I know Razer is kind of tackling that that now. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a mechanical solution. Uh, but can you talk about? We we're talking about how uh, there's some challenges with that earlier. You know, like trying to get because it is a very premium device trying to deliver all that uh, you know wireless with the low latency and mechanical switch and all that stuff um, can you talk about some of the challenges like the you know hit, trying to hit up an affordable price point mm -hmm. and I think you touched upon the fact that you might have different SKU options available mm -hmm. yeah I, I cannot share too many information right now about <laughs> about it but yeah that's one thing that that we took some time you know finding out in these surveys because the the prototype that we had at e3 was um, yeah was a prototype a concept mm -hmm. and then you know you have to strip this down I mean like 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 when when new cars are you know introduced you know the the final thing never looks like the prototype that you saw on, on the show so um, uh, yeah we we have to strip you know certain or we have to hit certain price points. Uh, and uh, that's that's what we are doing, and we will share new information about about the product soon. Okay, uh, can we expect it to look a little bit different, be a little bit smaller, or something like that? Or? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. It's okay. it's, it's the range design, is very small. The design won't change that much uh, because we found that that's one thing that we found in, in the service and also the feedback the feedback that we got from E3 mm -hmm. that especially the size is a good thing because it, okay. it makes it stable, it doesn't wobble around and stuff like that. So uh, the design won't be too different. Okay, gotcha. All right, thanks for the time. Well.